Hello, I'm Brian Mallow, and we are live from Lindau, Germany, where it's the 71st annual Lindau Nobel Laureate meeting. And this year is an interesting hybrid, unfortunately due to COVID, um, we have 600 young scientists and about 100 of them are participating virtually from around the world and 500 are here on the island of Lindau along with 30 Nobel laureates. And I'm speaking to two young scientists right now that are here on site and they're both from ETH Zurich. Joining me now is Sven Rudiger and Philip Boom. And I'm probably horrifyingly botching the pronunciation of their names, but uh, you'll have to excuse me for that. But Philip and Sven, thank you so much for joining me. Thank Hi. you for having us. Thank you. And I see that you are outside uh, with the lake behind you, and it's pretty beautiful, and um, just outside the Inselhalle. So welcome, and uh, let me find out a little bit about you and about your experience of the meeting so far. So um, what type, I understand that you two work together in a lab and are working on the same stuff. So tell me what um, sort of science you're working on. So Sven and I are both from the Morandi group uh, at ETH and uh, our group is mainly focused on uh, transition metal catalysis for organic synthesis. So we use transition metal catalysts such as iron, nickel, copper, palladium, uh, and we use those metals as catalysts for organic reactions. And then the reactions that we develop can then be used to make, for instance, drug molecules or materials like polymers uh, that have a wide variety of applications. So we are sort of providing new tools to make these uh, important compounds. Excellent. And are you, um, wh where are you in your career? Because the young scientists at the meeting just have to be under 35 years old, but there are some undergraduate students, grad students, PhD students, and postdocs. So where are you? Yeah, um, we're both PhD students. So I'm uh, sort of in the middle of my PhD and Philip is about to finish uh, his PhD. And yeah, so that's sort of where we stand. And is there, what is your, what are your PhDs about? I mean, did you already, is that what you just explained or is, could you elaborate a yeah. little? Is there a specific problem? Um, so, yeah, so our PhDs are mainly about what, I, what we just described. Um, and my research is mainly focused on nickel and palladium in specific. And, um, yeah, we just developed new reactions and our group also um, targets reactions that were previously done with hazardous reagents such as carbon monoxide or uh, hydrogen chloride. And then our group tries to develop new, new reactions that uh, avoid those reagents. Um, yesterday I was talking to a chemist who told me his favorite element was phosphorus. Do you have a favorite element? And and if so, why? I would have to agree. I also like phosphorus uh, because the reaction that I was working on so far uh, concerned phosphorus containing compounds and how to prepare them more easily. So phosphorus is definitely a good take. Yes. Philip, do you agree or do you have a different favorite element? Oh, it... it it looks like your image froze up uh, for a moment, but hopefully it will unfreeze. I think I can hear you though, Philip. Do you want to go ahead and try answering that? Well, they're connecting to me via a cellular signal outside, outside of a conference hall with 500 people carrying cellular phones. Um, seems they froze up. Um, I'm going to be, so ETH Zurich is an interesting university that is not too far from here, maybe 130, 140 kilometers from Lindau. And, um, they've often had, uh, young scientists attending the meeting. Um, 
I don't know if they could, maybe they can try to disconnect and, and reconnect with me. We'll see what's happened, but apparently they lost their signal. I'm gonna ask them to try to reconnect. Here they are. All right. I'm, I'm seeing you. So do you have a different favorite element, Philip? Uh, so yeah, my favorite element is most likely flooring, not because I've worked with it um, during my PhD, but I had some sort of a love-hate relationship with it during my master's thesis. Well, let me ask you about the meeting. We'll come back to your science, but um, did you have any anticipations? Are there, you know what, are there any, yeah, any anticipations before coming to the meeting? And also in particular, are there any Nobel laureates that have been inspirational or interesting to you, either personally or because of your research? Um, yeah, maybe I can go first. Um, I was really looking forward to the meeting. I mean, it's a, it's a wonderful opportunity. So many people here with so many different backgrounds, and it's really interesting to hear uh, just about their lives and also, of course, what they're working on. Uh, because, you know, like when, when, you, when you do research yourself, you become very focused on, on one uh, field or one specific uh, topic that you then might know, know uh, more about. But chemistry is very broad, and you really see that here, and that's uh, fascinating to see both with the young scientists and also with the different uh, Nobel laureates. And <laughs> if I would have to, should I wait until the? No, go ahead. I can hear you. All right. Okay. Good. Um, yeah, maybe one person who was really, or a couple of people who I was really looking forward to were. Uh, Dave McMillan, who just recently got the Nobel Prize, uh, and he's from our field, uh, along also with Ben List, who will be later here this week, I believe. Yeah. And uh, yeah, they're also working in catalysis, just as, uh, like us. Uh, so it's really cool uh, to meet these people and to um, not only look at their papers, what we typically do, but actually see them in person and talk to them. Yes. I, I can agree with Sven, and um, I was already attending the meeting last year, last year the general uh, meeting, and since it was on, only online, I was then also invited to this year's meeting, uh, which is only about chemistry. So I was really looking forward to have this in-person meeting to meet other young scientists, and then also obviously the Nobel laureates. And uh, just like Sven, I was uh, looking forward to meet uh, Dave McMillan and Ben Lisp. Um, yeah, since their research is so similar to what uh, we are doing. And then um, I was also looking forward to meet uh, Ben Feringa since um, I met him during my undergrad. And uh, I thought he was just a, a very inspiring and cool person. Excellent. And so tell me about the meeting so far. Today is Wednesday morning. Uh, the opening ceremony was Sunday. And so we had Monday and Tuesday, two full days. Have there been any highlights for you so far? Yeah, so uh, one of my highlights was that I had lunch with Ben Feringa that uh, Philip just mentioned. And um, yeah, it, it was really inspiring. Um, and I, I thought this this uh, sort of lunch meetup was uh, really cool because, you know, like when you talk to people in the hallway, you can like have a little chat, but then uh, in these long conversations, you can go a bit uh, deeper. And uh, what I think is pretty cool also is uh, the discussions with the Nobel laureates where they also mention some struggles that they were facing in their careers, how they overcame the, these challenges, and yeah ultimately it became very good at what they're doing and uh, I think this can give you a lot of insight on how you can succeed yourself in, in your career. Nice. Um, yeah, I personally also like uh, all the different formats that we have uh, here at the Lindau meeting. We have talks by the Nobel laureates, we have um, Agro talks where you m meet them in a smaller setting and then you also have those uh, open talks mostly in the afternoon where you can really ask them questions, not only about their science, but also about their personal lives. And um, what I also really liked were, were those um, 
uh, next generation sessions where uh, you don't only hear so normally you would only hear from the research of the Nobel laureates but then there's also an opportunity with those next generation sessions uh, to see what the, the other young scientists are working what they're working on Yes, and at, early in that, there was a little bit of an audio dropout, but when you were describing the different kinds of sessions, there's the I, the word Agora got dropped, I think. Agora sessions uh, that are like a scientist in conversation with someone, and like you said, yeah, there's a nice variety in those open exchanges where you really get to talk to them about anything and ask questions about anything. I'm, I'm glad you like that. And... Um, what about what's coming up still? We have Thursday and Friday. Are you looking forward to anything that still is to come in the meeting? Well, certainly the, the boat trip to Mainau on Friday. I yes. Think that will be another hike. Um, what else do we have? There's also uh, parking events uh, that you could uh, sign up for before the meeting. So we will attend one of them, uh, which is about fuel cells, actually. So something completely outside of uh, our research uh, scope. Uh, but yeah, it's just, you know, a very important topic. And uh, we, we know maybe a little bit about it, but not too much, if I'm being honest. Uh, so it's really nice that we also have these opportunities to learn about such topics uh, in more detail. Yes, it's interesting. This a meeting that is chemistry themed but has six hundred participants is extremely multidisciplinary. So that's so you know there's a motto for the meeting, educate, inspire, connect. And you've already sort of touched on this in a couple things you've said, but uh tell me about that aspect. So you just uh mentioned that you're gonna you're looking forward to a session that's pretty outside your field of chemistry. Um and do you feel that you are, uh, are you meeting other young, you know, there's all this focus on the fact that it's the Nobel laureate meeting, but are you connecting with other young scientists that are either in fields closely related to yours or not? I mean, not only in fields closely related to ours. I mean, if you say closely related to ours means chemistry, then yes, but um, as I said, chemistry is very diverse and, um, talking to people you, you don't see on their faces if they work in catalysis and then you just start uh, chatting with each other and they might do something completely different but it's uh, very exciting to hear about and um, there's there's lots of opportunities to talk to other people like we have had some very nice uh, dinner events where you can uh, chat with each other and um, also other things that are coming up like the boat trip when you can have uh just conversations also with the other uh young participants here in this meeting i i agree with that so there is definitely plenty of opportunity to connect to other people not only the Nobel laureates but especially the the young scientists and since uh everybody is coming from a different background it's uh, really interesting to hear the, indivi the individual stories excellent and speaking of coming from different backgrounds this is always, this has probably always been a problem in science, but um, we live in a world that is sometimes very divided politically, but many kinds of science completely depend on and thrive on international cooperation. And I understand that at ETH Zurich, you're there, there's an involvement with an initiative that sort of relates to this issue. Um, it, the kind of science you do is, do you have anything to say on this topic? So yeah, uh, since we are doing our PhD in Switzerland, we are, um, how do I say, Switzerland is um, not in the horizon anymore uh, from the European Union. So there's this initiative, Stick to Science, and uh, that uh, encourages Swiss and um, British researchers to further connect with uh, researchers from the European Union. And in my opinion, this is a very good initiative just to further, um, yeah, just to, to uh, promote further collaboration between international uh, researchers. Yeah, I also think that's, that's really important because, um, yeah, as I said, science uh, is very diverse and everybody has their field of expertise. But sometimes you need the expertise from another person and 
the easier it is to collaborate with other people, the better, you know, not only your science, but also science in general will be, and the better the scientific uh, progress will become. So I think it's very important that you uh, can really connect with everybody and uh, work with them as easily as possible. Yes. Well, you know what? Thank you very much for taking the time out from being in this an amazing place and an amazing meeting and taking the time to talk to me about it. And uh, in a little bit, uh, uh, we're going to meet one other uh, attendee from ETH Zurich. But one thing you can see is we're on this beautiful island and... Although there's a lot of science going on at this meeting, you'll see that it's about much more than just the science, the social issues on a personal level and an international level. So about international cooperation and meeting and connecting with people from other cultures and countries. Um, but there's also a lot of science going on here. So from the 71st annual Lindau Nobel Laureate meeting, I'm Brian Mallow, and we'll be back with more live interviews with some of our young scientists from around the world. Thank you.